Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we will talk about something which is uh, very interestingly called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. It sounds really very impressive, if I can say so. Well, um, the name is historical, and uh, some time ago, algebra was primarily concerned with uh, solving polynomial equations. And the higher degree of the polynomial uh, equation, the better. How to solve the polynomial equation of third degree, fourth degree, etc. Et well, um, there is actually some history behind it. I think it was Cardano who came up with the formula of solutions for the polynomial of the third degree. Uh, I'm not sure about the fourth, but starting from fifth degree, uh, I think it was French mathematician Galois who basically proved that it's not possible to express solutions of the polynomial equation of the fifth and higher degrees in, in radicals, just as some kind of a uh, formula, basically, which combines the coefficients of this polynomial. Anyway, um, the fundamental theorem of algebra um, is very interesting and uh, I think it, it is really quite amazing um, property of the polynomial equations. Uh, first of all, uh, it considers the polynomials only uh, in the field of complex numbers. So we're talking about polynomial of nth degree, which means the old, uh, the let, let, let me use the argument z uh, as traditionally uh, used for complex variables. So the polynomial of the nth degree of the argument z, its general form is this, where a0 should not equal to 0, because we are claiming that this polynomial is of nth degree, which means the z to the power of n must have a non-zero coefficient. So this is a general form of the polynomial um, of nth uh, degree, and it is assumed that z argument is a complex number, as well as coefficients from a0 to, oops, that's my mistake. This is a n n. All right. So all coefficients from a0 to a n are also complex numbers. So the fundamental theorem of the uh, of algebra says that this polynomial, if used in the equation must have at least one complex uh, solution. So there is always some kind of a complex number z, uh, which if substituted, it will result in zero. It's not an easy theorem, and this is one of those theorems which I'm just telling without proving them. Um, obviously, there is a ton of material about how to prove this particular theorem. Um, it's just beyond the scope of this particular course. However, well, first of all, it's very easy to like remember it. Like any polynomial has at least one complex, mind you, um, solution. Now, why am I saying complex? Well, for obvious reason, this has no solution among real numbers. But there is a solution among complex number. x equals i and x equals minus i. So, again, any polynomial has a root. Solution of this particular equation is called the root. It has one, at least one root. Now, there are a couple of color, color, corollaries. Well, something like simple consequences from this particular theorem, which I would like actually to present to you with the proof. 
and key regions. So let's assume that we have this. This is a polynomial of the nth degree. Now I know it has at least one complex root. Now, the very simple sequence of this statement is as follows. Let's say C is a root of this particular polynomial, which means if I will substitute it here, I will have a zero c to the nth plus a one z to the n minus one, etc. Plus a oh not z yes I'm substituting c which is a root um, a minus one c plus a n equals to zero. So this is given. I know that this c exists because of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Then the statement of my theorem is the following, that this particular polynomial can be represented as z minus c times some other polynomial, uh, but the degree should be n minus 1. So I'll use b0 z to the n minus 1 plus b1 z to the n minus 2 plus etc plus bn minus 2 z plus bn minus 1. So this is a general polynomial of n minus first degree. So my statement is that if z equals s is a root of this polynomial, then it can be represented as a product of z minus c and some other polynomial of uh, degree n minus 1. And I'm going to prove it. Now, um, just to make my life easier, I might actually use a uh, Sigma symbolic. Now, sigma means a summation. Well, just in case, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, I'll just uh, repeat what I mean. So this particular polynomial I can always represent as sigma of a i z to the n minus i, where i from 0 to n. It means I'm summing these elements, varying the index i from 0 to n. If it's 0, it's a0, z to the n, which is this one. If i is equal to 1, it's a1, z to the n minus 1, which is this one, etc. Up to the very last one, when i is equal to n, I will have a n and z to the power of 0, which is 1. So I can use this notation, and now I can rewrite it as this corresponding with b0, bi, z, in this case, it's n minus 1 minus i, right? Because it's an n minus 1's degree polynomial. And i from 0 to n minus 1. So this is basically another formulation of the same theorem, which I, uh, I, I, might, I might actually use it just as a, uh, some kind of a shorthand. So I have to prove this, knowing that c is a root of this polynomial. Now, the fact that this is a root, I will write again in this format. c to the n minus i is equal to 0, where i is from 0 to n. So this is given, and this is what I have to prove. Well, um, let's do it in a very, very simple manner. We will just multiply this by this. I'll open the parenthesis. If I will multiply z to all these members, I will have... Now, let me, uh, let me put it 
uh, explicitly without the sigma sign. It would be B0, Z, uh, N minus 1 plus 1 from Z, it will be Zn plus. Then I will multiply Z to the next one. So it will be D1, Z, N minus 1 plus, etc. plus. The very last one would be when I is equal to uh, N minus 1. So it would be B, N minus 1, Z, to the power n minus 1 minus n minus 1 and 1 from here to the first power. It will be just this. So this is the result of multiplication of z times all of these members. Now I have another one. I have minus c here. If I will multiply minus c by all of these guys, I will have the following. I will have minus uh, C B zero Z to the N minus one. Now it's not an accident why I put this member under this member because they have exactly the same power of Z. So the first member would be B zero times Z to the N minus one and times minus c would be this. And I put it under the z to the n minus 1. Now, to get the power z, uh, to get the, uh, the power 1 of z, um, I have to use n, uh, i equals to n minus 2. So it would be minus these are all minuses. Again, C, B, N minus 2, Z. And then, for I equals to N minus 1, I will have uh, minus C times B, N minus 1. So, this is the result of opening the parentheses. And this is expression which I will have. And my question is, is or is not possible for this to be equal to this? Well, let's just think about how can we make it. Actually, it's very simple. Can I choose B0 equals to A0? Yes in which case my z to the nth uh, power would be exactly equal to my original. Where is my original? My original polynomial is this. So, for uh, z to the power of n, this polynomial has a zero coefficient. Now, this has B0. So if I will assign B0 equal to, uh, to A0, now this polynomial and this will have exactly the same coefficient uh, at Z to the power of N. Now, how about the power Z to the N minus 1? Well, I have B minus C, uh, B1 minus CB0. It should be equal to A first, right? Because the A first a1 is the coefficient at z to the n minus 1. Can I do this? Well, actually, it's very easy. b0 I have already established. It's this, which means b1 should be equal to a1 plus c a0, right? So I can establish b1 using this equation. Now, how about the next one? Well, I didn't put it here, but you understand that this would be this, right? From which B2 is equal to A2 plus CB1, C multiplied by B1, which is 
a1 times c plus a0 times c squared. Right? If I multiply c by this, I will have a1 times c and a0 times c squared. Now, b3 minus cb2 equals to a3. From which b3 is equal to a3 plus a2c plus a3c uh, square uh, a1. C squared plus a zero c cube. So this process actually can be repeated uh, for all these members. Now the very last one, I will write it down, and uh, I will just write it down uh, by analogy with this. But obviously, it can be proven uh, by induction. It's a very simple thing. So. My very last one here would be uh, b n minus 1 minus c b n minus 2. It should be equal to a a minus 1, n minus 1. From which b n minus 1 should be equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 c plus a n minus 3 c squared plus etc plus a 0 c to the n minus 1. Again, it can be proven by induction from all these absolutely equivalent uh, equations. And the only thing which is left here is this. And it should be equal to the coefficient uh, which is free of z, uh, or, or z to the zero's degree, which is a nth, right? So in addition to all this, I have this. Now, if I didn't have this, I have already found all my coefficients from b1 to bn minus 1. Now, obviously, I can't really just use these without checking that this particular equation is also uh, is also uh, true. Is it true or not? Well, let's just you know find out what it is. If this will be a true uh, equality between these two things, then these solutions are actually everything which we need. These are exactly the coefficients of this polynomial of n minus uh, 1 degree, which is needed to be multiplied by z minus c to get the original polynomial. So, all I need right now is to check if this expression for b n minus 1 substituted to this would give me a, an identity. So, let me wipe out this. You don't need it anymore. already done its deed. Now, well, let's find out. I get this one, and I should multiply it by minus c, right? Or, by the way, instead of this, I can, I can do it this way. a n plus c b n minus 1, it should be equal to 0, right? So that's the, that's the equivalent uh, uh, equality which I should check. All right, so... Let's check what b n minus 1 is, and we find out what it is. Multiply it by c. Now, what happens? a minus a n minus 1 times c. Then, plus a n minus 2 times c squared plus etc. Plus, the very last one would be, well, the one before last would be a 1 c to the n minus 1, and the very last one would be a 0 c to the nth, right? Each member is multiplied by c, so this exponent is increased by 1. This is what I have from this. Now, a n plus this one. And it should be equal to 0. Is it equal to 0? Aha! Uh -huh. Absolutely. Why? 
Here is why. Because C is the root of the original polynomial. So, original polynomial, uh, which is this one, has a root C, which means if you substitute C instead of Z, you will get zero. And this is exactly what we have to check. So, this last equation really is always satisfied if I choose B's like I did, like, like I did before. And that actually finishes, uh, this is the end of the proof, that any polynomial uh, of the nth degree can be represented as a product of z minus c, where c is a root, and some other polynomial of degree, uh, of degree which is one less than the original. So p n of z, it's any general polynomial of the nth degree uh, in the field of complex numbers is always represented, can be represented, as polynomial of the smaller by one degree and z minus c where z is the root. Okay, so this is the first corollary, the first very simple, well, it's a little lengthy, but it's really simple, uh, consequence of the fundamental theorem of algebra, because the fundamental theorem says that the C always exists for any polynomial, including this one, of course. And that's why it is possible to do it this way. Now let's do a different uh, theorem. It's another very simple consequence of, or corollary. Since I know that this is true, then uh, exactly the same theorem can be applied to this polynomial. It also has some root uh, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? So, if I will call this root C1, which means my first root, now this can be represented as this polynomial of the n minus 2 degree. And C2 would be a root of this polynomial. Right? Etc. Obviously, it's true for this as well. And finally, it would be z minus c1 times z minus c2 times etc. times z minus... Now, for any polynomial, real polynomial, including the polynomial of the first degree, I will have some kind of a root. So the polynomial of the first degree will also have some root. Now, what is the polynomial of the first degree? Let's go this. Well, obviously, this is some, something like this. This is the first degree, right? And it has a root. I mean, obviously, it has a solution to the equation az plus b is equal to zero. And we can represent it as this particular solution times some kind of a constant, right? Actually, this constant is supposed to be equal to a. where cn is a solution. So there is a constant at the very end. This is the result of the, the very last, uh, the very last representation of the polynomial of the first degree as z minus its root and some kind of a constant, which is no longer a polynomial. So no longer our fundamental theorem is applicable anymore. So that's basically the final form. Any polynomial of the nth degree can be represented at. Well, incidentally, A is not just A. For obvious reason, this is A0, the coefficient at z to the nth degree. Uh, because you can only get z to the nth degree from the multiplication of these if everywhere you take z, 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 and you will have one actually coefficient at z to the nth degree, right? There are only n um, 
multiplier. So to get z to the nth degree, if you open all the, all, all the parentheses, you have to multiply z by z by z n times. And the coefficient will be 1, so you need a0 to, 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 to convert it into a0 z to the nth degree. Basically, that's it. This is the end of uh, this second uh, corollary to the, the fundamental theorem of algebra, that any polynomial can be represented in this particular form. And by the way, incidentally, it means that it has exactly n uh, roots. Because every time I have a root, I can always represent it in this way. So I can always find n different root, well, n roots, not necessarily different, because sometimes c1 and c2 or whatever, they can actually be exactly the same value by accident. But anyway, uh, there are n of them, and it's exactly n of them. Because every time I have a new root, I'm reducing the power from n to n minus 1, from n minus 1 to n minus 2, etc., down to 0. So there is no other solutions, it's always n, and you can always represent your original polynomial uh, in the field of complex numbers, again, I repeat it again and again, uh, as the product of these z minus roots. Um, and as I said before, some of them might actually be exactly the same values. Like, for instance, if you have z squared is equal to 1, well, uh, I'm sorry. If you have z minus 1 squared equals to 0, this. You have root 1, and then you have another root 1. So there are two roots 1. c1 is equal to 1, and c2 is equal to 1, right? So the, the roots can be uh, multiple, uh, how should I say it? Uh, uh, multiple roots can, can, can have exactly the same value. Let's put it this way. It can be double roots, triple roots, etc. But in any case, the theorem is always uh, formulated as any polynomial of the nth degree in the field of complex numbers has exactly uh, n roots and can be represented in this particular form where a0 is the coefficient at z to the nth degree and c1, c2, etc., cn, are roots. Um, okay, basically, uh, this statement, it seems to be a little bit stronger than original fundamental theorem um, of algebra, because fundamental theorem says that any polynomial has at least one root. This is a slightly stronger statement. It has exactly n roots. Um, however, um, these two statements are basically, um, I mean, this is kind of a consequential, and uh, the, the derivation is so simple that uh, in many cases I've, I've actually heard about the fundamental theorem of algebra stating that any polynomial has exactly n roots. Well, it doesn't really matter, it's basically, it has some maybe historical value, but no more than that. Um, that's it for the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, uh, try to go through this material again, um, maybe just from the notes, and uh, try to follow the, the proof, whatever I have uh, presented here, there is one in the notes. And again, don't forget to register and uh, go through the exams. Thank you very much. That's it for today.